Today we are going to talk about arterial diseases, in particular Raynaud's disease. So Raynaud's disease. So what is Raynaud's disease? It is an idiopathic vasospastic disorder involving arteries and is characterized by the Raynaud's syndrome or the Raynaud's phen phenomenon. So a few words about the Raynaud's phenomenon. So Kaufman criteria has been established for uh, defining the Raynaud's phenomenon or the Raynaud's syndrome. Episodic attacks of well demarcated, reversible, self-limiting color changes lasting 1 to two, 20 minutes on exposure to cold or emotional stimuli and is symmetrical or bilateral lasting for 2 years. So there will be multiple episodes where color changes happen in the extremities and the duration of that is uh, less than 20 minutes and usually it will be following a stimuli or a trigger like uh, extremes of cold, weather cold or emotional stress and when it happens it is usually symmetrical or bilateral so both the hands would be affected and such a, uh, such a history lasting for at least 2 years would classify the problem as a Raynaud's disease. So it is an idiopathic vasospastic disorder involving arteries and is characterized by the Raynaud's phenomenon. So the Raynaud's phenomenon is named after Maurice Raynaud who was a medical student who defined the first case in 1862. She said it was episodic symmetric acral vasospasm characterized by pallor, cyanosis, suffusion and a sense of fullness or tautness which may be painful. So it is a color change which occurs where it become, the, the part becomes pale, then appears blue or cyanosed, and then it appears flushed or red in color because of the return of the blood supply. At that point it is also painful. So what are the stages of Raynaud's phenomenon? There are three stages which are classically described local syncope, local asphyxia, local recovery. Now here I mentioned the fourth stage, local gangrene, but it is not actually a part of Raynaud's phenomenon. So whenever the, when somebody, somebody asks about there are only three phases. Now if you don't recover, if it is not self-limiting, then it will end up in a fourth stage known as local gangrene. So local syncope, this occurs due to the vasospasm uh, and the palm with the digits become white cold with tingling and numbness. So it doesn't affect the full hand, it is the fingers and the portions of the palm. Now local asphyxia, it occurs due to the accumulation of deoxygenated blood and the palm with the digits because appear bluish with a burning sensation. And the third stage local recovery here there is relief. It occurs due to relief of spasm in the arterioles which results in return of the blood into circulation and so there is flushing and pain in the digits and the palm. Now the fourth stage I told you I already mentioned if it persists or the vasospasm continues then the affected part will go into gangrene. So local gangrene. If the spasm persists more than the ischemic time then the digits go for ulceration and gangrene. This is an occasional part of the syndrome. So this is how it looks like. You can see these are the fingers. You can see the vasospasm over here because of which now the blood supply is no longer there. Now here the vasospasm is still persisting and water of blood that remains in the palm become deoxygenated and so the ex that, that portion appears to be cyanosed or blue in color. Now the vasospasm is relieved and the blood is returning and so the affected part appears flushed or red in color. Now uh, this can happen idiopathically without any reason. Now there are other causes which can result in the Raynaud's phenomenon. One is in professionals or workers who use the vibrating tools like chainsaw or pneumatic road drills. Second, those who have collagen vascular diseases like scleroderma, 
rheumatoid arthritis, Jogren's syndrome, systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE, then cervical rib. Now, Burgos disease we have already discussed in another class and that is also a cause for Raynaud's phenomenon. Certain drugs like beta blockers, cisplatin, malignancies like leukemia, lymphoma, lung adenocarcinoma, all of these can result or present with a Raynaud's phenomenon. Now regarding the clinical features, it's usually bilateral and commonly seen in young females and affects the upper limb and usually the medial four fingers and the palm are involved. So the thumb can get spared. So usually it is the medial four fingers. Now the episodes are usually triggered or provoked by either extremes of cold or emotional stress. Then I told you the risk factors that are previously mentioned. Any of those also can result in a Reynolds phenomenon. The patient usually develops blanching, that is paleness, then cyanosis or bluish color, and then later flushing or redness on exposure to cold. So there are three phases of change. The initial white is due to the vasoconstriction, then it's followed by a blue color that is due to the cyanosis, and then it's by the red color that is due to the rapid blood reflow. But if the spasm persists, then ulceration or gangrene can occur of the digits. Now, in this case, unlike other conditions, the peripheral pulse are usually normally felt. Recurrent attacks are usually there. In a year, maybe five to six attacks can, can, can be seen or even more. Now, features of associated or underlying collagen vascular disease may be present. So, depending on the etiological factor, the, the clinical features of those can also be seen. Now the investigation, just like any arterial disease, an arterial Doppler or a duplex scan has to be done. Then further investigation can include an MR uh, angiogram. You can take an X-ray of the part. Now to rule out other collagen vascular diseases, you have to do an anti-nuclear antibody assay or ANA profile or ANA assay. Or you can do a rheumatoid arthritis, RA factor. So such assessments can be done to rule out other causes of collagen vascular disease. Now, you can assess the segmental blood pressure gradient from the brachial forearm, wrist and fingers. Now, it's not frequently done, but that is also one way of looking. So This is how it appears. So, here the palm is also actually not involved, only the distal portion of the fingers. So, white, blue and then red. So what is the treatment? So treatment is that once you identify the Reynolds phenomenon, you have to rule out other causes, whether it is idiopathic or is there a primary cause which is responsible for Reynolds phenomenon has to be ruled out. And then if it's a professional or a worker who uses vibrating tools, it's better to avoid the job by avoiding vibrating tools. At the same time, you can avoid extremes of cold and hot. Now drugs is the main form of treatment, so vasodilators, can be used or pentoxifilin, a low dose aspirin, beta blocker like nifidipin can be used, sorry uh, uh, not beta blocker, uh, nifidipin calcium channel blocker can be used, then drugs like AC inhibitors, nitrates, endothelial inhibitors have all been tried, prostaglandins like ipoprostanol also have been tried. Now, for those who still have the, uh, who are present with ulcers as well in the fingers and the hand, then cervical sympathectomy can also be attempted. So, the main form of drugs are, main form of treatment is medical. Use vasodilators, pentoxifilin or trental, low-dose aspirin, nifidipin, 